Let's dive a little bit deeper on Digicams. First off, a resource, stevesdigicams.com. We're gonna have to throw some obligatory Fs in the chat because unfortunately this website is no longer being updated, but it's still an excellent resource for cameras in general, but especially Digicams. Select a camera brand from the side here and this is where the magic happens. You'll be presented with a massive list of cameras. Scroll down and keep an eye on the date and you'll start to see more Digicams than you know what to do with. Wow, I really like this one and I can get it in pink. That matches my Game Boy Advance SP. What the hell is that? I, uh, I really love Pentax. Also, can these ads, like, fuck off? I'm not buying a Mario baseball game. We're getting off track here. This site is dangerous. It makes me want all the cameras. But this site is sick because you can get a feel for the camera's features, how it looks, and most importantly, sample photos, information regarding batteries, and memory cards. Batteries for Digicams can get a little tricky. Many require very specific batteries made just for that camera. That's a pain in the anus because first off, it can get costly if you want to buy extra batteries, but more importantly, these are old batteries that we're dealing with here. It's very possible that some of them will no longer hold a charge. A big thing to keep an eye on are the Digicams that use ubiquitous batteries like double and AAA. It might make the camera a little bit bigger, but I'd say it's a fair trade-off to ensure that the camera will, uh, you know, work. Media storage is another thing to consider. While there are a plethora of Digicams that use SD cards, certain brands like Sony decided, hey, I'm uh, not gonna do that, which is just awesome. Many older Sony Digicams like my P200 use memory stick, which is basically a uh, long SD card. It's from Long Ring Long Land, you know? <laughs> So I've been watching One Piece, if you can't tell. Memory stick is not the same as SD, so it will require some sort of card reader or the cable that came with the camera to get the photos off the camera and onto the computer. Some even use floppy disks. What the hell is even that? Ugh, don't even worry about it, I'm just old. Now, if you're anything like me, you don't get too caught up with the whole CMOS, CCD, Pen15 thing. Much like everything else in this hellscape we call the internet, there's passionate debate over the merits of CMOS versus CCD sensors. There's definitely some romantic dialogue out there regarding the almost film-like nature of the older CCD sensors with reference to richer colors, good noise performance, and all that jazz. Oh my god, I've said it before, but the photos straight out of my Sony P200 look pretty nice, no edits required. If you're interested in geeking out about that stuff, I'll link a few resources below that discuss CMOS versus CCD sensors. My advice to you, don't get too caught up in the pissing contest that is gear obsession online. It's so much more productive to just go out and shoot rather than argue with a bunch of Redditors over megapixels. CMOS sensors are far more common nowadays because they're cheaper to produce. Most of our phones use that technology, but many of the older Digicams use CCD sensors. And if you go back to the really old ones, you can find Digicams with like less than one megapixel. Don't be afraid to experiment. Don't think that low megapixel counts will prevent you from making interesting work. And food for thought, right now you can find old, obscure, and overlooked Digicams for roughly around the price of a roll of Portrait 800 if it's ever in stock again. So I guess there's another good reason to experiment. And I guess the other good thing is you get more than 36 shots. Camcorders are a little more complicated. They use different tape formats, and some camcorders were even made just on the cusp of digital, so they use tape alongside SD or CF cards, which is a really interesting hybrid. I'm not gonna do a deep dive on tape formats, that's a whole other beast. If you want a video on that topic, let me know in the comments below. OP always delivers, even if it takes 30 years. But just for the record, I have two camcorders. My primary uses Hi8 tape, and my backup uses mini DV tape. Now you might be saying to yourself, if I can get a camcorder with an SD card or some way to bypass using a tape, why wouldn't I? Well, it would be a lot easier because you wouldn't have to deal with the digitizing, but recording to tape is where the magic happens. When you record to tape, that's where you start to see the distress, the weird little glitchy things, the tape hits, the static, all that fun stuff is on the tape. And as you record over and over again on a single tape, these imperfections will get more and more apparent. So if you're looking for that distressed look, it's going to be easier to get on a tape. You could always fake it in post, I guess, but that's not as fun. The most complicated part of filming on tape is digitizing your footage so you can actually use it. The short story is you need to take an AV signal and get it onto your computer. There's a lot of options. I explain my convoluted ass backwards workflow in my video about my Hi8 Canon camcorder. You can check that out after this one. You can also pick up a dedicated device for digitizing your footage, which honestly, it sounds like a good idea, but it is another expense. If all this digitizing business sounds a little bit too extra for you, keep in mind that many of the older digicams are capable of recording video too and you can cut that straight to an SD card or even a memory stick and that's a little bit easier than digitizing if you're not trying to go crazy with this. Noptop, who is a good friend of mine and an awesome creator, gave me three big pieces of advice when I was first looking to buy a camcorder. First and foremost, he recommended trying to find a seller who has a complete set. A box is nice, but even if there's a camera bag with all the cables and the battery, that's usually a good sign. That usually implies that the seller took moderately okay care of the camera. Try and find a camcorder that uses modern batteries. Some cameras use the Sony MPF 
life batteries, which you can find everywhere today, that would make your life so much easier. But keep in mind, if you do your research, you will find that there are third parties out there like Wasabi who are still making batteries that are compatible with these older camcorders. And regarding formats, he recommended Hi8 because it's a little bit newer compared to the other formats. I followed his advice and I managed to pick up two fully functional cameras, both of which I paid less than $50 for. And speaking of buying these cameras, the last thing I want to talk about today is the best places for you to buy a Digicam or a camcorder. My first recommendation would be to check with your friends and family and see if anybody has any of these cameras laying around. A lot of people just put them in a junk drawer or stick them in a box and put them in a closet, shove them up their ass, all sorts of things. And if they have a camera that you can take for free, you're in the game. This strategy totally worked for Follycorp, who's part of my Discord. By the way, you can join my Discord. Link is in the description below. Thrift shops are another great option. I always see Digicams at Goodwill and stuff like that. And to expand on this idea, Aimshoot Develop recommended checking out estate sales, which is something I didn't think of, but another really good idea. The internet is your friend. eBay is a good resource. Some sellers list if the cameras have been tested or not, which normally is pretty accurate. While it is possible that a seller can lie about the condition of a camera. You lie! You lie! They're very much on the honor system, so if they have a thick 2% rating, maybe avoid them. So what do you think? Are you going to buy a Digicam or a camcorder and make some hip, happening, nostalgic uh, stuff? Cool stuff? Very cool images? Let me know in the comments below or join the Discord. Find me on Instagram. You know where I am. Uh, this video is now over. Goodbye, my precious little eggies. I almost forgot to say it, but I, I said it. Like, like and subscribe. subscribe. Sweet, Sweet Lou Photography. Dumb man.